Okay, let's uh, head back to our story on Syria and the ongoing protests there, uh, in which 25 people at least have been killed in the city of Homs as protesters continue their campaign to uh, fight against President Bashar al-Assad. We can speak now to Nasser Wadadi, who's the outreach director of Hamza, a non-governmental organization which supports people campaigning for civil liberties in the Middle East. Joins us now from Boston, where his organization is based. Uh, just curious to get into the whole um, security issue here and to what degree security pervades life in Syria. Think about it this way. Syria has multiple security services, and the life of a Syrian citizen is like a tightrope above a pool full of alligators. You don't know who you're, uh, you're supposed to account to, and you don't know exactly what are the rules of the game. They have multiple security services that are set up deliberately since the Ba'ath uh, Party took over in 1963 to make sure that not one single man ends up with too much power on their hands. So if you're a Syrian citizen, you have to worry about the internal security, you have to worry about the military intelligence, you have to worry about the uh, Air Force intelligence, the Ba'ath Party intelligence service, in addition to a, a swarm, literally an army of informants and sleuths who are writing reports. So uh, it, at any given moment, it becomes so surreal that you don't know who to exactly be afraid of, and the result is for you to be uh, mindful of anything that you say, even in front of your own okay. family members, because uh, you, you chances are that somebody is writing reports. Right. Sorry to jump in there, but you have a uh, very personal experience, because you, you grew up in Syria, didn't you? Absolutely. As a, as a matter of fact, I have an emotional bond to Syria because the, that's where I spent my formative years, and I saw it firsthand during the uh, um, the Hama uh, events. I've seen people being beaten in the streets, and as a matter of fact, uh, some of my own family members were attacked by uh, uh, government paratroopers at the time. These were part of the infamous Saraya Difa, which were under Bashar, uh, Rifat al-Assad, uh, Bashar's uncle. And some of my own female family members had their clothes torn by bayonets by female tr paratroopers at the time who were trying to make a statement that any outward sign of religiosity would be basically crushed and not tolerated. And in, I mean, I, I, I lived in that system, and I remember as a child uh, um, seeing the, the striking difference between what uh, was said on TVs uh, in Syrian media and uh, uh, in foreign press newspapers, because as diplomats we had access to those. And I remember that Syrians who were friendly to us and to my family would come to our house simply to get access to that information. Okay, and as you look on the situation now, what's going on in Syria from afar, from where you are in Boston, how do you assess it? How much momentum do you think these protesters have got? How much control do you think the government may be losing? Do you think we're heading towards some kind of tipping point? I think that actually I was extremely concerned in the beginning of uh, these events on March 15th because it took only a few people to come out in Damascus and they were crushed immediately. And uh, what we have seen is because largely because of the brutality and clumsiness of President Bashar al-Assad's regime, uh, they effectively helped the Syrians break the, the fear barrier. Whereas before March 15th, the mere idea of coming out in the street and um, uh, protesting against the government was unfathomable. And just uh, yesterday and last week, people's attitudes hardened because of the uh, brutality of the, the regime and its multiple security forces. And now we're hearing chants of the, the people want to bring down the regime. You have to understand something. This is unprecedented since 1982. And no one would have thought this would have been possible to see thousands of Syrians pouring out to the streets, uh, destroying the effigies of uh, uh, Hafez al-Assad, uh, Bashar's father, and, and destroying his pictures, and saying at point blank, at the risk of their lives, that we want to bring down this regime. Uh, there's, like, there's been a tipping point that has been reached, and there's no going back. Nasser. Interesting to talk to you. Very interesting. Thanks very much indeed for your perspective on this. That's Nasser Wadadi.